Hey there, today we're going to talk about how to build a powerful branding. My name is Aino and I've been in the design industry for more than 20 years building brands and experiences um, in two continents in the United States as well as here in Europe, Finland. Uh, we're going to talk about the framework of branding, kind of like what goes into that powerful brand, how do you build it, what are the components, and what are the key focus areas that you have to pay attention to. So powerful brands, as I like to call them, and I call them powerful because if your brand is really well built, or if a brand that you're building for your clients is really well built, uh, it is powerful. It can really attract more business. It can make uh, you feel more confident about your business or your client make more confident about their business. A great branding can have so many positive and powerful impacts. Branding today is super, super important. Social media changed everything. So basically everything, first of all, is visual. Um, you have to look good online. Everybody's trying to do that. You have to create more differentiation maybe than before. Visual differentiation, visual recognition. Uh, if you are already on social media, if your business or your client isn't on social media, that brand is already being formed. So there's no point of waiting to see like when is the right time to start building it. It is already being, it's already happening essentially. As Jeff Bezos said, your brand is what people say about you when you leave the room. So this happens behind your back. Uh, but branding, this conscious effort is your best effort to try to influence that conversation and manage that conversation. So just know that it's already happening. There's no point waiting. Let's get to it. So powerful brands are cons or consist of three key areas. One of them is the brand strategy. Uh, another one is visual identity, and that's the visual part that we all know, logos, colors, and things like that. And then also messaging, what is being said and how it is being said. So let's deep dive into all of those different sections, shall we? Okay, the foundation for powerful branding that I like to kind of think of, or this is where I recommend how to start it. And this is where all the branding agencies that I worked in started the brand work. It is the brand strategy. So brand strategy, I always say the brand strategy is also business strategy because as a business owner, or if you do, if you, if you have a business, if you ever run a business, these are the things that you have to think about anyways, regardless of if you're doing a conscious brand work, uh, if you're trying to manage your brand, um, or even if you are not, you are already thinking about these things. So brand strategy is um, the kind of the foundation that you build everything on. And I will have more detailed listing later on. Like we, this is a high level, we look at all the three areas and then more in detail, we're gonna go deep dive into what is in each of those sections, okay. But just know that brand strategy is basically the part that defines what is this business? Where is it going? What is the vision? Who does it serve? All these things that you already have to think about if you own a business. So brand strategy, like I mentioned, there's a listing kind of like these key components that are very critical for each of these or this area. So we typically start with um, from this why. And it doesn't always have to be, the why doesn't always have to be very like sort of your personal why. It's also sort of why does this business, this offering exist? There's also a reason, or I mean, always a reason for that. There's always a reason. Why does it exist? Why should anyone care? So this is the very sort of foundational element if there is no reason for a service or product or offering to exist. And if there's no reason why anyone would care, you don't have a business. So this is the underlining, really underlining principle. It also oftentimes um, includes things like, why is this important or why is it changing the world? Sort of more idealistic ideas, um, often also kind of um, discussed in the company mission or vision statements and things like that. So it can be more sort of um, l larger why than just very like uh, very specific and very practical, but practical why is also good. Ideal customer is part of your brand strategy. So who do you serve? Who is your offering? Who is your um, uh, services and products meant for and why for this particular group of people? Um, value proposition, what kind of value does your uh, offering bring? Uh, emotional value or, or, or practical value or both kind of aspects of that. The brand personality, what is your brand like? What kind of feelings and thoughts does your brand evoke? 
uh, if your brand were, were a person, what kind of person they were, for example. So each brand has a personality. They're either joyful, they're more solemn, they are colorful, you know, s similar words that you would describe a person uh, with. So definitely brand personality, critical part of brand strategy and leads towards the visual identity. Brand positioning, this is critical in, uh, especially in comparison to your competition. So how does your brand compare in the marketplace? How do you, do you how is it currently positioned? Uh, do you wanna uh, consciously change the positioning? Are you an everyday brand? Are you more of a luxury brand? And in the context of those competitors, where are you positioned? Where is your business, your brand positioned in this, uh, in this uh, positioning matrix? So this is a very um, sort of strategic or business strategic tool, the brand positioning matrix tool to try to define what your current position is and where do you wanna be a certain amount of years? And also giving you a very sort of conscious look at like, these are my competitors today. But if I want to be in the different area of the matrix, um, your competitors will change. Walmart does not compete with Neiman Marcus, for example, but they could be in the same matrix. If you currently, your competitor could be uh, Walmart, but in future, you want it to be Neiman Marcus. What do you need to go to get to from that point A, point B? And there are good frameworks for how do you define that matrix? How do you define, how do you figure out where you are in, in that place? And then brand strat brand strat part of brand strategy is your tone of voice. How does your brand speak? What kind of language does it use? It goes hand in hand with the brand personality because tone of voice, not necessarily the words. Um, well, of course, the words, words is what <laughs> makes language, but not necessarily the messaging part yet, but more like what kind of feelings, what kind of like, does it use slang words? Do you speak very respectfully because your target audience is elderly people, things like that. So defining the tone of voice will impact uh, how your brand is perceived. And this is really critical because today's social media presence is so important. So you gotta know like, am I going to use very sort of casual language online or am I gonna use very sort of uh, formal language because that is what attracts my, my uh, uh, my uh, potential clients or my potential customers. And that is what supports my positioning. That is what supports my brand personality, all those things. So you are going to start seeing how all of these are kind of tied together and go hand in hand. So in sort of in summary or in a nutshell, brand strategy items can be divided in two halves. First one is basically, why does your brand exist? Why does this business exist? And the second part is, what will it look and feel like? And both of these are important and critical for the entire existence of your business. But especially the second part, what will it look and feel like, will seamlessly lead into designing your brand's visual identity. One of the, the, the brand sort of critical brand areas is brand visual identity. And this is the one that we most pay attention to because people are visual creatures and whatever is visual and out there, we see it, we pay attention to it. That's what catches our attention. Visual things are also incredibly critical for marketing purposes, for your brand recognition, for uh, catching attention if you do any advertising um, and just creating that look and feel, the very particular brand look and feel that you want to have. Um, so it has been said that, or the estimation is that your customers, your prospective clients need to see your brand anything between seven to 15 times. It used to be about seven to 10 times. And now they're saying probably more like 15 times before they actually are ready to buy from you. So if you do online advertising or any sort of social media advertising, you know how it works and you kind of keep following like the touch points and things like that. Um, if you run those ads, there's a good chance that your prospective customer would have to see your ad, or your ad or any other communication from your business almost 15 times. And now we get to the part of brand recognizability. If your brand is not recognizable visually, 
between those 15 times, they're going to get lost. So they have to be also able to put one on one together that this is the one and same business that I'm getting these messages from. It also helps just findability online when somebody's trying to identify and find a particular business or service. So it is very, very important. One part is also evoking those right, very particular feelings and images, look and feel, so to speak, among the target audience that you're trying to reach. So visual identity is one of your po most powerful tools of creating that brand look and feel that you want. And now if you did the brand strategy part really well, the, almost half of those, those brand strategy items with brand personality, brand tone of voice, and so forth, the positioning, lead towards this visual identity. That means that if those things are really, really well and solidly defined, they give you already a, some kind of framework that you know that what your brand needs to look like. They give you an idea of the colors, they give you idea of the fonts, they give you idea of the logo, and how your visual identity needs to be expressed on different marketing touch points. So if you follow a good framework and you start from the brand strategy and you build, build towards uh, having everything together, it's not that difficult. So there are really great frameworks uh, that you can follow. And if they, if they like and sort of systematically build on uh, each layer or each step on the previous step, you will notice that it's not very difficult to build a brand. There's very logical, psychological reasons why certain things lead to some other things. And it is kind of like putting a puzzle together. Um, of course, you are going to, some design skills are required, but most of it is just logical thinking, some research skills, things like that. Let's take a look a little bit what kind of things in branding are part of the visual identity. So here's a listing of the stuff that we typically associate with visual identity. You need a logo. It doesn't necessarily have to be super amazing dashing thing if you're just starting out, but you need something. You need something to put on your website. You need something to possibly put in your business card uh, and things like that. So you need, it's like your signature thing that, or you have the stamp from your business that this is this whatever deliverable, this whatever communication is coming from this particular business. Of course, colors. Colors are super important, very, very powerful for evoking emotions, and therefore part of and very critical part of visual identity. Fonts. Fonts also have personality. Um, we don't necessarily consciously think about that, but it is, I mean, um, intuitively, we often tend to choose fonts uh, based on the look and feel, and maybe you don't think so much of the practical side of it. There's a lot of different sides on fonts. So like I said, they evoke feelings. There's a very sort of, they express personality, but there's also, are you choosing good, technically good and functional fonts? Can you use them on web? Can you use them on print? Because uh, it is a technical part that comes in building when you are in concrete way building and putting together assets for your business. So fonts critical from many point of views. Fonts are also one of those things that if you use them well, you can come out as very, or your business can come out and brand can come out very professional. But if you're not doing it well, it can also come out as less professional than you want it to. Okay. Photos. The photos of ourselves, the photos of our products, photos of our services, photos of our clients, photos of anything that our business uh, is sharing out there in the world are definitely part of your visual identity. And photos should have a defined unified um, visual direction that is defined by your brand guidelines. So you shouldn't just randomly go choose photos that you like. There has to be a strategic methodology of choosing photos, even from like stock photo services. And there are ways of looking at them as a set, even if they are taken by different photographers, there are ways that you can do to make photos that don't look like came from the same set to make them look like they did come from the same set and from the same photographer. So it's critical that whatever look and feel, what kind of treatment of these photos that they all support your brand strategy, your visual identity and the brand guidelines. Um, it's sort of becoming an art director for your own brand and for the photography. And if you're doing branding for clients, you need to put together, and even if you're doing it for yourself, it's good to put together this guidance sheet where you have examples of photos, the lighting, things like that, um, and the stuff that they need to uh, take um, 
uh, they need to consider when they're choosing photos. There are good ways and good sort of frameworks for how to choose photos to make sure I like to use this keyword method where you define a list of key keywords to help you find a specific um, specific style of photos. Um, I call them brand keywords and they actually help guiding a lot of the visual identity work. Um, design elements is then rest of it, what I call, it can be illustrations, it could be icon styles, it could be maybe you wanna use a texture of watercolor textures behind text, maybe you wanna use um, other kind of textures or gradients, things like that. Anything else that is not part of the four previous ones, I typically call design elements. And if your brand includes any design elements, it could be any kind of like visual, uh, you know, uh, it could be simple as, as simple as saying, I always want to have in my social media post this pink rectangular behind the text. Well, that should be defined in your brand guidelines, always in certain context, use this pink. And, and then when you use it, let's say you use it in social media, and then you start using it in some other um, communication in your email, maybe you start using it in some other branded communications, people are gonna start recognizing, oh, it, that is the brand that uses that pink background or whatever. So these are all, even if it's not logo, it's not uh, specifically a font, or in that case, because we're talking about text, it would be combination of design element and uh, choosing the right font. And of course, pulling from the design uh, or from the brand colors. So design elements are often um, guided by the previous selections, like um, colors and, and, and things like that. To put all of this together, there's great, like really good frameworks for doing first like mood boards and things like that. I teach those to my students and it really helps step by step if you know in what order, like how to do a really good mood board that guides you. How is that mood board based on the strategy work? When you start the mood board work, what do you look from the strategy work to inspire that? Then how do you down, um, narrow down to those keywords to help you guide things? Um, there's really good uh, ways, and this is how I teach it to, or, or there are really nice ways how I teach it to my students to make sure that it's very step by step. And, and if, if, if the visual identity is, sometimes it can feel kind of like, well, look and feel like feelings are very like, how does this actually represent? Like, here are some really like quick, concrete list of things that you need to, that why you need to have a visual identity defined as typically some kind of brand guidelines. It doesn't have to be like a huge Bible, but at least like one sheet or two sheets of, you know, brand identity sheets to guide the work either for yourself or if you hire designers also for them. If you have this done well, it's going to save you time later so much when you're doing things like designing your website. You don't have to think about anymore what fonts, all that stuff, you've defined it already. Any content for your social media, like social media posts, the templates for those posts. Uh, these days we have so many different kinds of social medias that it's better to have some kind of guidelines that all of that presence will be a unified and visual representation. Uh, business cards, I don't know if a lot of people use those still, but you should definitely have visual identity defined before you start designing business cards. Email headers, things like that. If you have designed emails, if you do any kind of flyers or brochures, and these don't have to be paper guys anymore. So these can also be like digital. So I know a lot of entre entrepreneurs who do all kinds of guidebooks, how do how to do something or uh, how to guides for something or like little, <coughs> excuse me, digital that people can download from somewhere that have step-by-step -step for something or recipe cards. I don't know, it depends what you do. Um, but any of those things that you need to produce, you need to have visual look and feel so that all that communication will be unified and aligned to your brand. And when people get all these snippets from your marketing, they can put it all together and follow that seven to 15 touch points, you know, to the purchase decision. So consistency is key uh, and recognizability. And all of that is being built by your branding, okay? Another critical of those three uh, areas of powerful branding is messaging. And messaging is now, it's tied to the tone of voice. It's definitely comes hand in hand with the strategy. So you see, it doesn't matter if you go from strategy to visual identity, or if you go to the mess messaging part, you have to have the strategy work done first. Otherwise, you're going to be having open questions. If you don't do brand strategy work and you go directly to visual identity or messaging work, 
you're going to have so many open questions that you end up using a lot of time. The work is not going to be effective. It's not going to be efficient. And you're going to be kind of scrambling around trying to going back like, oh, I should have thought of this. I should have like answered this question. I should have figured this out. I should have looked for information about this and that. So if you just follow the framework and start from strategy, you can actually go either directions. Um, I explained the visual identity first. I oftentimes like to do the visual identity myself because it gives me ideas on the messaging. It, it allows me time for the strategy to kind of brew in my mind. And then when I move that into messages, the brand messages, that works comes a little bit faster. You can do it the other way around. Sometimes people, when they figure out the messaging, that gives them really good ideas for the visuals. I'm more of a visual person and that's how I process information. Uh, oftentimes when I design things, my brain is already working on the next thing. But you could go either way, but as long as you do the strategy work first. So what is brand messaging? There are some key messages uh, involved, but really typically it's defining the company's mission, it's defining the company's vision. And those as mission is typically um, defined as what is the change that you wanna do in the world? And vision is sort of how are you going to do that? And then of course, part of it is like writing it in a package in a nice package that then you can use anywhere in your company's um, um, marketing. Tagline and slogan, sometimes uh, companies and brands like to have a little tagline and a slogan. If you have that, it's really powerful. I mean, think about Nike, just do it. McDonald's, I'm loving it. All these like, we know it. If somebody says, just do it, you immediately think of Nike, right? If somebody says, oh, I'm loving it, everybody thinks McDonald's. So the thing is that these kind of uh, slogans become things that remind people about your brand. It also becomes like, a powerful tool that can um, that can communicate more closely about what your business is about, the actual, either the mission or the actual service. So there was a motel chain that there, um, uh, or, or, or a hotel or motel chain that um, basically their tagline was, I think was something like, um, we'll leave the light on for you. So, I mean, that, immediately creates like, oh, somebody's waiting for me. I Maybe I'm on a working trip and it's going to be dark, you know, and at night when I get there, but we we'll leave the light on for you. It's like somebody, like I'm not going to home alone, even if it's, you know, a, a hotel that I'm going into. It was, it gives you immediately feelings. It gives you an idea what the service is, but it also gives you feelings, certain feelings about that business. So taglines or, or slogans can be really powerful as well. Brand messaging helps you communicate the unique point of view. So this is really the part where you pull from the strategy work, what makes you different from others. And now it's time to communicate that in a very enticing uh, manner that catches people's attention. Your values or the business values, definitely part of messaging and then key messages. There are different ways to draft those, but I always like uh, to create a set of key messages that then business owners can uh, sprinkle across their marketing. So you never have to start from like entirely empty slate. Uh, they're also nice to put in your social, um, social media and your kind of like your websites and stuff. So there are frameworks of trying to figure out what those are, what those key messages should be. And here are some really concrete examples of where you, the, the basically the deliverables, the results of your brand messaging work, where is it going to end up in? So we have marketing messages that could be any marketing that you do. Do you do email marketing? Do you create these flyers or brochures that we talked about? Do you have, um, I don't know, TV ads, whatever marketing you do, these messages or your messaging, brand messaging will end up there. Website. Most business owners, I should say all business owners today, ha should have online presence. There are very few business owners that can get away with not being online. That's how we, that's how our prospective customers um, look for information these days. Nobody has a phone book. They'll go to, you know, online and try to find information on a specific service. Social media, most businesses have some kind of social media presence. What are you going to say there? What is your profile going to say? So this messaging will help you figure all that out. Podcast introduction, if you're being introduced or if you're being interviewed for a podcast, for example, it's nice to have a little quick
or an RV, you can highlight certain things or specific things from your messaging in those. Your website about section is really good example, but it might not be on your website. Maybe you are, you know, your products are sold in some other person's or some other business's platform. And there's a little about this business or who created it, who made this, this about, uh, maybe it's on Etsy, whatever it is, it should reflect the messaging work from your branding. And any introductions, anywhere are you in an elevator, you know, the, the feared elevator pitch kind of type of idea. This is not about pitching you as much as quickly learning how to introduce yourself with, um, with communicating your brand values and what your business does in a very quick and short way. And there's any other marketing collateral, like I said, that your business might need or produce, having the messaging nailed down is really, really great tool to make that work faster, more efficient, more effective, more powerful. So definitely worth looking into. So these are the three key areas of, of building a powerful brand. Now, now each of these areas is really important to get right. And like I said, you want to start from the top from the strategy work built to either visual identity or messaging. And once you have all of those three done, your brand is in really good place and you're ready to go take over the world, you or your clients. Also, if you do this as a client work, I, I recommend you follow that structure. Um, the thing is that sometimes clients may have like the strategy work done already or something like that. Then you can still use the framework because you know, what do you need to know? What is the, the parts of the brand strategy that you need to know so that you can either create the visual identity or the brand messaging um, kind of uh, more, like I said, more quickly, more efficiently, and more, and it becomes more effective, more powerful. Uh, you can uh, request those certain things from your client. You can hand them a little sheet saying, hey, I need you to fill these. I need this information from you. If you don't know what how brand strategy guides visual identity or messaging, you don't know what to ask from your client. So you definitely want to understand how that brand is built if you're going to do this for clients. It doesn't mean that you have to do all three areas. You can still just focus on that visual identity or you can still just focus on the messaging part, but you need that strategy from the client to, to have figured out um, so that you can do your work better, right? So it's, you can do it for yourself. You can do it as a service. It works both ways. As long as you follow the kind of the framework uh, and start from the strategy, you can only sell one part of that or all three or two parts of the branding, the full process. So let's, let's look, take a look at slightly different way, like more concrete, deliverable way of looking the different layers of branding. So we already discussed kind of like the strategy, the visual identity, um, the, the messaging. Let's look at the very sort of concrete deliverables that you have to produce in each of those layers, okay? So this also follows the framework that I teach for my students on how they can uh, build brands for themselves or for their clients. Oftentimes we start with this foundation and I call it you. And you refers to either the <clears throat> business owner, them, or, or it always refers to the business owner themselves. So if you're a designer who wants to do branding for others, you just, in, in this case, does not mean you as a designer. It means the business, the business owner. Quite often, if your clients are small, or if you are a small business owner, it is the founder. Uh, but it also can refer to the origin story of a larger corporation. So how did, how was this? idea, this business idea, how did it come up? Uh, how was this business founded? All those things, there's usually an interesting origin story. If it's just one person's business, it can be very personal. Um, you may have overcome, or that person may have overcome some difficulty that, you know, opened their eyes. You could get really powerful brand stories from that, or it could be just uh, an invention that somebody made that is really interesting. Like there's usually a really interesting story. So in my framework, we look into that. Uh, that leads oftentimes leads into why. And we look at both like the more deep ways of why am I doing this? Why is the business doing this? And also just like really sort of practical, why should anybody care that this pro like this product or service exists? Uh, in my framework, we look at mission and vision and how there's examples, how you structure each of those. 
And what is that unique twist that you put into your work um, what, or, or your product or your service? What makes you unique? And then we kind of figure out the value, prop value proposition, difficult word, value proposition. That is essentially what value does your offering bring to your potential customers. And a lot of the marketing is communicating that value. So it's really important a part of the strategy to figure out what that value is. Sometimes it takes some research work. Sometimes it takes discussing with prospective clients or your target audience to figure out what kind of value they're looking for. After we focused on the, the kind of the origins of the offer, the business, how that came up, what is that built, built and made up, what are the values behind it and the value that it offers, we look at the next layer, which is the customer. Um, you could start from the customer as well, and you could look at the customer first. And a lot of the frameworks these days are so so-called so human-centric, customer-centric frameworks, it's fine to start from there. I like to start from uh, from the business, kind of the reasons for it, that business to exist. Because um, oftentimes you already have the business, it already exists. So most of my students are people who already had a business. The customer-centric approach, if you start from the customer, implies that you are researching your audience. You don't have a business idea yet. You don't have a business yet. You are now researching your audience to figure out what kind of business you can create. So th this is just a heads up. If you look into customer centric, which is perfectly fine, uh, customer centric approaches, and you hear that discussed a lot these days, I teach it the other way around because most of my students already had a business and they might be looking for the right audience, right? So we discuss the customer impact. What kind of impact do you create and how does defining the customer steer your business and impact the decisions that you make with your business, with your brand, with your offering? So the customer impact sort of goes both ways. We draft this customer or this ideal customer avatar to make sure that you know who you are talking to and who you are trying to target with your advertising, with your marketing. And we, after that, we really hone it down into something called niche audience. So try to define it even, even more tightly and try to figure out like, um, what are the things that help you figure out what your niche audience might be? So a lot of companies have things that communicate that they can figure it out. It, do you have a potential for finding that niche audience? So you may have heard the saying riches are in niches or niches. It, it basically means that the, the more clearly you can define, the more specified your offering is to a specific problem or goal, the likelihood that people will buy it, the people who have that problem or goal will buy it is higher. So niching down is very popular and very could be very often very uh, profitable as well. Brand personality comes after those. So now we're starting to move towards the visual identity work, but we're still doing the strategy with brand personality and brand positioning. And those are the things that I help my students figure out or help them figure out how they can do it for other people, okay? And once those two layers have been defined, we will then move to the top tier, which is your story. So here, I don't mean literal story that you write, even if you could do that as well with the brand messaging framework, but I talk about the story of everything, like the strategy, how you pull all that together to, to visual identity, because the your visual identity is a representation of that story. So that story is now forming and we are starting to visualize that brand story, okay? So we talk about the tone of voice and then of course the visual identity. And I, I teach my students how to either communicate that, that story to a designer if they don't wanna do the visual identity themselves, but I also teach design. So I actually teach how you can design logos, how you can either take elements that are ready, you can buy elements and combine them into a visual identity. But I also have trainings on how to use Adobe, uh, Adobe software so you can actually create things yourself. So we do logos, we do color and fonts, we do photography direction, we do all these uh, different, we talk about different design elements. And then we build an identity system. So you can see how this framework is kind of forming into 
um, a whole powerful branding from, from starting from the strategy towards the visual identity. And then finally, when that story is formed, we practice or we, we learn how to tell that actual story through messaging. We go through the values, we go through the mission and vision, we go through tagline and slogan. How do you make those with examples? Because it always helps me to hear examples of famous brands, basically like how did they do it? What, do, what are they communicating? I help you figure out or I help my students figure out what makes their offering unique. How do they stand out from the market or in the crowded marketplace? How, did, how to connect with prospective clients and customers and how do you then convert those into, into paying customers? So there are different frameworks for figuring out that out and I'll teach a couple of those. And on top of everything, it's time when everything this is ready, it's time to implement it in your branding with your website, your social media, maybe you do layout design with workbooks, freebies, brochures and presentations. So that's something I teach. And that's like a, the visual representation of everything you've done. So now you can list from this training everything that you need to know. You know now how to build a powerful branding. You know what you need to define. You know how those are connected and that's how they make uh, the impact that you want to want to make. And all is left to ask, do you want to build a powerful branding? Because if you do, and like I said, I teach people, you can go ahead, there's enough information here. And if you go to Google, <clears throat> you can find different frameworks for all of those. So that is fine. I hope your brand will be amazing and I love to see it. So if you want to share anything with me, go to Facebook and find uh, Brand Builders Society group. It's a Facebook group where um, uh, people who follow me or who, who are my students and, and follow my trainings, uh, join that group and show me what you created. Tell me if you use this, this training until here to to figure out what are the pieces and how they connect together. Because like I said, there's information is out there. You can find it, go to YouTube, whatever you want. But if you want to continue learning from me, if you enjoyed what this was, I teach it and it's not, I have an online course, self-paced online course called Branding Done Right. It's um, it's teaches brand strategy, it teaches visual identity and marketing design and brand messaging. So all of the things that we talked about build in a way that each step builds on top of another one. It's a very sort of clear system. It's, I made it as simple as possible, explaining it in the, the simplest possible way so that you don't have to have a design background, although it helps. You don't have to have a copywriting or copywriter background, although that helps too. If you're just wanting to build a brand for yourself, if you follow this framework, you will get a nice brand. And I will have had students who created their entire branding through this framework and it's unique. It's one way to get a, a visual identity is to go and buy a full set, like a template, templated set from Creative Market or something. And those exist in or Etsy and they can be great. But remember it's a template and somebody else may have the same one. Um, or it may not be exactly what you want and you still have to change it, but you don't know what to change or how or to which direction because you didn't do all the strategy work. So this is, it's, I always encourage people that, or even if you use that template, if you do the strategy and the messaging work still, you know what to look for and what kind of visual identity will complement all of that and make it more impactful, okay? And like I mentioned, this my course follows the exact structure that we've been through here. Through We built the brand strategy with all the components that I discussed uh, with and here on the side, you see my print pyramid, which which includes all of those pieces. And this is a framework that I've seen used and I've used myself working in branding agencies in San Francisco and in Finland. So I know it works. I've seen it used in really big clients um, and I've used it myself on very small clients. So I know it works. I've seen it in, in action. So through brand strategy, we do all this all this work for defining your why mission and vision statements value proposition ideal customer avatar brand personality brand positioning but we also then design that visual identity with logos brand color library brand fonts photo direction additional design elements and so forth we do the brand messaging with a unique point of view we define the key differentiators what makes your business different unique offering message key messages DAC line slogan and framing your story through your messaging 
And then I will teach you how to implement all of that in marketing designs, such as web design, uh, social media, layout design, and presentation design, because your brand, I don't just teach people how to do the brand. I actually also show them how to implement in their marketing so that they can use it. The whole idea of this course has been that you don't, you never have to hire anyone if you don't want to. Um, of course, it can make things faster and easier if you do. And there are uh, definitely people who don't want to do each part. But if you do, this one course will help you get through all of it. And kind of hand in hand with everything, I'll also teach you basic design principles that you can apply to anything, any any um, written communication, visual communication piece that you need on any uh, marketing channel, you can implement those basic design principles. I also teach you color psychology so that when you're choosing those colors, how to use them to so they're most impactful. And then basic, basic typography so that when you are going forward need to create more marketing collateral, it'll be easier for you to understand how to make things that look professional. So like I said, the idea is that you don't always have to hire somebody, you can do more things. Also, if you have an assistant, let's say that you have a virtual assistant, you don't wanna do all of these things, you can get this course for them and they can do all of this stuff for you. So that obviously works as well. I also have really cool bonuses in this course that if you if you get this course, Name Your Brand Training by Charles Strauss, who's a copywriter in San Francisco. So if your business doesn't have a name yet and you need to create one, or if you want to change your business's name, or if you want to create a new product line in your business or a new service, or maybe you do courses or something, you want to create a new course and you need to name it. This helps you, this uh, teaches you Charles's own naming framework. So he is a professional namer. He worked as a professional namer. We worked at the same branding agency where he came up with names for businesses and I created then the visual identities. And this is really great and really important today, especially when we all have these devices on our, on our wrists where you can just ask, hey Siri, tell me this and that. We don't really, if you're driving in a car or if you're using a smart device to search for a yoga studio or a, a, I don't know, hairdresser or hairstylist in your city or whatever, you can't, you can't tell Siri like, hey Siri, give me a hairdresser in this town. Like you can, but if you're driving a car, what are you going to do? Like call 10 of them? So today, business naming a business is more important than before because all these voice control devices, you want to be, you want your prospective customers to be able to simply say, hey, Siri, I need a phone number for Hannah, the hairstylist. So, or, or, or I don't know, like a. Okay. I found this on the web. So I need a phone number for Hannah, the hairstylist. See? listening but if i would have just asked that like, give me like random 10 top 10 hairdressers in this town and i'm driving at the same time or i have like three kids running around me like it's not going to happen so you want to create a, even through your business name you want to create a brand that is immediately recognizable people are going to ask for that specific thing when they use their voice control devices instead of like just random mix of things okay and like I mentioned, I also have special trainings on like Adobe software, how to design a logo professionally. If you are looking into doing this for your clients, what are those things that you have to pay attention to creating logos professional for other people and then web design because web presence is more important today than it ever was. A couple of other things that comes with it. Um, I have created this brand identity kit. So if you just want to get something done for yourself quickly and Maybe this is what a quote unquote starter brand and you just want to move on quickly. There is a, a, a template kit that you can use to create something. It works in Canva. Uh, if you're not familiar for using professional um, branding tools or prof professional design tools like Adobe. So this is really like you could get your visual identity done in like an hour with this. Uh, just make sure that your strategy work is done. So whatever you use this template kit for, actually reflects the strategy and communicates those things that you want to, because you still have to define colors. I, there are like color libraries. I've done like hundred color uh, libraries with font pairings that complement each other, but you still have to choose the right one to make sure that you are communicating exactly the right things, okay? Another thing that I that comes with it is this 
ultimate freebie template. So it is a workbook template, also a Canva template. So if you if you do a lot of uh, brochures online or digital like PDFs, things like that, that you want to uh, use in your marketing, there's templates for everything there. There's like step-by-step -step guides. There are uh, marketing guides for showing like these, uh, like you see here, like these little uh, devices in them. You can plop your work into like phones and and computers and their recipe cards and whatever you need. So you get this one as well. And it's Canva, so you don't have to use professional um, design tools like Adobe. So it's made as simple as possible for folks. And there's also comes with trainings, how to use these templates. So if this sounds good to you, then I uh, urge you to go to um, check out this, this offering. So you gotta go, you will go to dailycreative.io slash branding. And so what does this cost? It costs right now with one payment. I have a limited time special offer minus 30%. And it comes down to about 207 or $208, something like that. You get 30% off from the original price, 297. That is a tiny price for everything you're going to learn and that you are going to use practical and practical ways every day in your business or defining a new skill, learning a new skill that you can use to build brands for clients. This $200 will come back to you multifold when you start doing this work as a, you could do a logo design, whatever you do for clients. So this is a really tiny price for everything that you can learn um, in, in this one online course. Just remember that this is a limited time offer and you need to use the coupon code brand 30. So use the coupon code and the code is valid only for the single payment um, option because you also have an offer for paying in parts. So I know times are difficult with all the inflation and you tell me what's happening. Uh, so you also have, you can get an installment plan of three monthly payments of $99, okay? So if you pay in just one payment, you can get it with a 30% discount or you can choose to do a three monthly payments of $99. Either option is really affordable for what you get. So if you're interested, or if you just want to learn more, uh, go to dailycreative.io slash branding. There's a very long page that has more information on branding, more information on the specific course. Um, and if you so choose and you purchase the one-time payment, remember to use coupon code brand 30 so that you will actually get the discount. Remember, it's only a limited time a discount. So go quickly and make sure that if you are interested and you want to purchase this before the offer expires. Okay. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope this was informational. If you have any questions for me, um, you should be able to post somewhere in the comments here. Uh, you can also go to Facebook, find Brand Builder Society um, and join that group. It's a free group. There's more trainings that are free, or you can just go ahead, make a small investment and get branding done right and start building a brand that can change your business and change your life um, or start building brands for other people with the skills that you acquire. I hope you had a great time. I hope you learned a lot and I hope to see you either inside Branding Done Right or at Brand Builder Society as soon as possible. Talk to you later. Bye.